everybody and welcome back to Power Plate Chats about women's health that we do every Monday. Um, this month we are going to be talking about bone health and like everything we do or every chat I've done to you, this is about health, so how to behave, eat, sleep, move in a way that's good for your bones long term. Now, bone health really probably should be a priority for everyone. Um, women, I wrote this number down somewhere, women's bone density peaks at 15 to 20 years of age. And um, menopause is a really significant time of life for us because our, our bone density uh, diminishes a lot quicker than it did in the years leading up to that. So from 20 to 45, whatever age we go through menopause. Out of 10 million Americans, 80 are with osteoporosis, which is literally translated to mean bones with holes. Out of 10 million Americans with osteoporosis, 80% um, of them in women. And in Australia, 29% of women over 75 um, are living with osteoporosis compared to just 10% of men. So it's a much bigger issue for us than it is for men. Uh, and the good news is there's heaps we can do about it, including staying active as a child. So in true form, I am going to sit and talk to you today and then I'm going to get off my bum next week and show you how to move to get the most from your bone health and to maintain your bone health as long as possible. So first things first, you need adequate nutrition, um, adequate vitamins and minerals and adequate load to have healthy bones long term. So if you're not sure, you need to go to your doctor and get a blood test. They need to check your um, vitamin D, uh, they need to check your healthy weight, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you're, so we've talked about menopause and the fact you're a woman. If you also have a thyroid disease, if you have arthritis, especially if you're taking medication for it, or any other kind of, um, say liver, kidney disease, or any other inflammatory disease that, like of your bowel that affects your absorption of nutrients, then you are a high risk of developing osteoporosis and you just need to work harder at it as soon as possible. It is never too late to start, um, but the earlier you start, the better. So regular screening is probably key if you're one of those in one of those populations. So most of you are watching this on Power Plate Australia. And I assume most of you have a power plate or access to a power plate. And the good news is there's some great studies on whole body vibration and bone mineral density. And it's now considered a safe physical activity for people with osteoporosis. So basically how it works is gravity is pressing you down and the vibration is coming up like this. And every time that happens, so on 30 hertz, that's happening 30 times a second. Every time that happens, you have a micro moment of ground reaction force, which is exactly what you need to load your bones and to maintain the density of the bones. So any time you are either static or moving above the platform, in between gravity and this action, you are working and stimulating muscle and bone growth or maintaining muscle and bone pressure. So in this way, just to be super clear, it doesn't matter if you're just holding this or if you're doing some kind of motion on here. As long as you're between the platform and gravity, you are training your bones. So obviously, um, the more vulnerable you are to falling, the stiller you might be, at least in the beginning. And if you're a 21-year-old athlete, you, go, you can go nuts more safely than someone older. Um, whole body vibration also increases your um, human growth hormone and testosterone, which is like important hormones for muscle and bone building. And it can even slow the loss and prevent the loss of bone mineral density altogether. So it's very exciting. In another review, um, this was a review of 12 studies. Seven of them showed that there was an improvement in bone mineral density when training on the power plate. 
The other five, or the five that didn't show an improvement, their vibrations were either too low or too high. So your power plate goes between 25 and 50. The vibrations in these studies were under 25 or over 50, and they didn't show an improvement, okay? The power plate has its medical device derivative, which means it does, um, it has been independently tested as a medical device. So, for this reason, more is not necessarily better. If you have a vibration plate that isn't power plate, it might go up to 70 hertz. That isn't necessarily better. And I think I've said that a lot, like fat loss for women, brain health, heart health. For like 99.9% .9 of health outcomes for women, moderation and consistency is key and more important than anything else, than intensity. Um, so, muscle mass, which is also a contributor to bone health, um, it peaks around 35 years of age. So our bone, 15 to 20 years, muscle mass, 35. If you can maintain bone and muscle mass at the same time, then you are in the best position possible um, to maintain healthy bones for as long as possible. So for this reason, we're gonna go straight into exercise next week. Um, we'll probably do two weeks of exercise, one where we load with gravity and weight and another where we load with vibration and gravity still. All right, if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to comment or send me a message. Otherwise, I will see you next week.